Hi, Homeworthy. It's Margo. Welcome to my home in North Carolina. I'm so excited to have you here. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Thank you to Serena and Lily for sponsoring today's episode. Hi, I'm Margot Roth, and I am a small business owner in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and this is my home. So Eric and I, my husband and I, have lived here for going on three years this summer, I believe. Um, we bought it at a time when there was no other houses on the market, and we were really, really lucky to find this house. I think a lot of um, other people didn't come look at the house because it actually has one bathroom. So it's quite a small house. I would say a cottage style house. We're in a historic neighborhood that's located um, kind of at the heart of the town that we live in, which is Winston-Salem. Um, the house is adorable. It has great space inside. Um, my personal style is very English, country and English cottage, so the overall vibes of the house lend really well to that. We're the second owners to ever have this house, actually, which is really exciting. The first owners um, built it and they lived in it. First the parents did, then their children did, and then Eric and I were the second family to ever um, own the house, which is really incredible. They did a great job of maintaining it. So the bathroom, the one bathroom that was there was really dated. The kitchen was dated. They had done a small renovation on it in like the early 2000s. So it wasn't stylistically my style, but we just appreciated so much how they took really, really great care of the house. Um, but when we moved in, all of the walls were painted gray. Um, there was no color in the house, no real kind of, there wasn't anything that was helping it, just like giving it more character and the kind of charm that it deserved. So a lot of what we did was uncovering original features, like um, trying to maintain the hardware that was used, the picture molding, um, and all of those things. And then also bringing in my personal design style which like I said, is very English um, and adding in a lot of color, a lot of texture, lots and lots of fabrics and prints. Um, and then we also fully redid the bathroom and the kitchen as well. Welcome to the entryway of our home. Um, it's more of a makeshift entryway than a traditional entryway because we have this really large, long room right here. So we kind of wanted to create a space that felt like when you were walking in from the front door, you had a little bit of an entryway kind of introductory space to take off your shoes, hang up your coat, and then transition into the living room. Um, as I have kind of indicated, I really love obviously using antiques in my decor, but I think even more special than that is using antiques that are heirloom pieces from your family. So this coat rack was actually built by my great grandfather um, and I was lucky enough to kind of inherit it down from my dad, we used to have it in my child house growing up, and then now I get to have it here, so that's really special. But it's kind of just a place to hang up your coat, put your shoes. I have a bunch of boots here because we have a backyard full of farm animals, and we need to put on our boots a lot of times to go out there and kind of clean out their um, pens and things. So, little makeshift entryway. 
And as you come in, I always like to have a mirror that is facing the light source so that the room feels bigger and brighter. And I also think it's kind of nice to provide a mirror for your guests upon entering a new house so that if someone wants to like check their hair or something, they can do that. So we have this really beautiful antique gilded mirror, as well as another family piece. Um, this was also from my dad's side of the family, and I'm not exactly sure who it belonged to originally, um, but we had it in a family property for a while, and then they were moving things out and kind of asking people who wants what, and I took it because I just love having antique pieces, especially if they were in our family. And besides that, we just have a lot of art, as you can see from, you know, moving into the living room space as well. We have tons and tons of art that I've collected over the years. A lot of, not as many originals as I would like, a lot of prints, which is traditionally what you find more when you're thrifting and vintage hunting. But this space has worked really well for us, kind of cutting up the room and making a smaller little entry space so that you can welcome your guests in. I believe that the house was built in the early 1920s. I'm not exactly positive on the date. I think my husband is saying that it was built in 1924. So that would make it um, like exactly 100 years old, which is pretty amazing. So the house itself isn't, when you would look at it online or maybe on paper, it wouldn't seem huge because it's technically only three bedrooms and one bathroom. I like a smaller house in general, and I tend to like a house that isn't open concept either, so it was perfect for us in that way. But each of the rooms individually is a really great size, particularly the living room, which is um, where we're filming right now. It's a great spacious room, tons of natural light. The house has all of these amazing historical original features like tall ceilings. Um, picture molding, really large case molding around all of the doors and the windows. So I feel like it kind of punches above its weight in terms of size with all of the style and the charm that it brings. So coming this way into the living room, which is really just the larger extension of this whole room, we used this couch to kind of create the block that separates the two different spaces. And then I filled in the rest with other furniture. I'm sure as you can see, I am definitely a maximalist in the way that I like to decorate. I especially have tons of different collections of certain items, so I have all of these little ceramic dog figurines. Um, Eric and I have four dogs in real life, and I just obviously love animals, so I've collected these little ceramic figurines and filled it in. It's very maximalist, um, very layered, which I've said before is kind of my design style. And then I think helping with the cottage aesthetic, is these baskets. So I've added in a lot of texture to this space by using baskets, the wreath, and kind of natural fibers and textures like that as well. I always like to have fresh flowers in the room. Um, I find a ton of great fresh flower deals at Trader Joe's. That's a pro tip if you're wondering. Um, but I love having fresh flowers in my space. And then you'll probably notice I also have so many books. I have stacks and stacks of design books that I've collected over the years. And I really do read and flip through these all the time. Being online these days, I think we see a lot of the same images recycled over and over and over again. And so it can be kind of amazing to go back and look at design books from like the 90s and the early 2000s, like this one and get inspiration from these books where um, you're kind of seeing images that you wouldn't see on social media. So that's really refreshing. And then as we move this way, I just have some really cozy chairs. 
the whole theme I think when I'm decorating is to be comfortable and have people feel comfortable and cozy like they can come in and sit down and read a book or watch a show so I love having these really plush squashy English style armchairs because it creates a really cozy environment for guests. I also have this Chase lounge right here which is actually one of my most asked about pieces but like with most of the decor in my house it's thrifted or antiqued or collected over the years. I don't have a lot of things that are from box stores or bought new. And originally that was because when Eric and I first started furnishing our home, we legitimately couldn't afford to buy new furniture online. It's just so expensive. So as I started thrifting pieces, I found that those items that were antique or vintage were oftentimes a way lower price point, so much more accessible, and then way, way higher quality. So we've just enjoyed using vintage pieces. They're also amazing because they're completely unique to your space. This is kind of our <laughs> secret hiding spot. So we do have a TV. We just have one TV in the house um, because Eric and I both love to watch movies and sports. So we have our TV hidden away in this antique English cabinet. This is like a English pine cabinet, most likely from the, oh gosh, like I don't know, it's several, several hundred years old, imported here from England, so I love that about it. Um, and we've just kind of decorated it with various knickknacks and collectibles. Um, but this room has just really provided an amazing, cozy, comfortable space where we can have people over and gather and it feels, uh, it just feels so cozy. I love, I love this room so much. When we first moved in, the fireplace was, I believe it was not brick. So they had already painted over it in a white, I think it was just like a plain white, the same color as the trim. I would have loved for it to have been the original brick, but because it was already painted, I knew I kind of wanted to do something really special with it. And I finally decided to do a high gloss paint. It's a really almost like a lacquered finish, which is kind of, um, it gives it a little bit of a historical feel, a little bit English, a little bit stately feel. And we went with a paint color from Benjamin Williams' historic Williamsburg collection because we wanted something that felt like it was keeping in the time period of the house, um, kind of keeping with the time period of the rest of my decor. I wanted a blue color, but I didn't want it to be too bright or aggressive. So this really ended up being the perfect paint color. And I will say when I first painted it, I had a little bit of a panic for like the first hour after painting it because it was such a big transition. Uh, but now I couldn't be happier. I'm, I'm so pleased with the way it turned out. And everybody mentions that everyone's like, oh, I love your fireplace. I love the blue. So it's been a really fun statement for this room. That's another question I get a lot is if the fireplace is working, because obviously we have all these baskets here, which would be a huge fire hazard. So no, the fireplace does not work. It was actually originally a coal burning fireplace and I am not sure on the history of that. My dream would be for it to be a wood-burning stove or a wood-burning fireplace, but it's just not set up for that. So eventually we might try and um, remove what's currently in there and maybe transition it to a wood-burning fireplace. But as it stands right now, it does not work. It sadly just, just looks beautiful in the space. Yeah, it's obvious that I'm a maximalist. It's obvious that I love decorating with tons and tons of prints um, and, and textures and different fabrics. And to some people, I, I think it probably would be overwhelming. It would be too much color or too much pattern or too much texture. But for me personally, I think that it the meshing of all of these different fabrics and textures and patterns really gives it a cozy, collected feel that's not too formal. As you can see, none of my furniture is technically matching. Nothing is from a 
set that you would buy at the store. And I think that that creates such a cozy, homey feel where it looks like the home has been collected and gathered over so many years. I do think to help with the cohesiveness, it's nice to maybe pick a few colors that you're using that are bolder. Like I have some red accents and then I'm using a lot of tans and browns um, and earth tones and then adding in a few pops of brighter colors here and there but i love using an earth tone and i think the other thing that's helped with this space staying peaceful in a way despite everything going on is that the walls are actually painted white um, which i traditionally am not someone that loves a white wall i like to paint walls in colors. I love wallpapers, but for this space in particular, having the white walls gives all of the furniture, all of the decor, all of the pieces space and room to kind of breathe and speak for themselves so that you're not then on top of that distracted by a wall color or a wallpaper in this particular room. This mirror I would consider to be one of my most prized possessions. I actually bought it off of a friend who found it, believe it or not, in a local thrift store. It's originally from, and now I'm not gonna remember this, but it's from a store. I wanna say it's from Saks, Saks Fifth Avenue in New York, and they used it as a dressing room mirror back in like the 90s. And then a woman had it, I think she was the designer for them, had it in her house for a really long time and then just decided to donate it. And my friend very luckily happened to be in the thrift store the day that she donated it and immediately snapped it up. And she used it for a while, but it wasn't meshing with her decor style. So I immediately, when she was selling it, was like, I wanna buy this. And it's moved with us from our previous house to this house. And that was one of the most treacherous moments was moving this in the back of the truck and just praying that it wouldn't get broken but it survived and i really love it um it's been a really special piece to have and it adds a ton of depth and light to this room i do tend to decorate a lot with bows i like to add bows to everything i've toned it back a lot in the past few years and started to kind of add them just more tastefully here and there but as you can see i i like to add a bow as a little pop of color to what would normally be a more regular piece of decor i think it adds a little something fun and to be honest a lot of times i add them in for the holidays and then i just forget to take them off and so they be kind kind of become just a part of the everyday decor and next if you'll follow me we will head into the dining room my husband and i came to see it together because we do so we own businesses together and we do pretty much everything together and we restored this house together as well so when we both came to see it i think we both immediately knew that it was a perfect house for us it's the first house that we've ever owned we're really lucky to own a house as young people i feel like that's a big privilege these days to be a young person and be able to own your own home um, and so we were just so excited to be able to have something that was ours we had rented for so many years before that um, and it was really special to be able to own a house as beautiful as this and fully put our own handprint on it and kind of make it exactly the way that we wanted it to be. And here we are in the dining room. It's not a very far transition. Um, and I recently wallpapered this room. So this is the first room that you are seeing that has wallpaper, which is one of my great passions. I've used wallpaper for multiple rooms in this house that you'll see later. But we started off, this was the first room that we did, and I chose this really pretty red and cream wallpaper. I believe it's actually from Spoonflower. Um, and we had it wallpapered, and it took about a day and a half not that long and we were just so thrilled with the way it turned out 
I love that it kind of adds this very cheery, happy vibe to this space. This room in particular doesn't get amazing light throughout the whole day. So I wanted to do something that made it feel happy and bright throughout the whole day. Um, and this piece right here is really special because this is another piece actually from my dad's side of the family and it was my great grandmother's I believe um, and interestingly enough it was built by hand they built it in high school wood class which is crazy to me because that's something that I would have never done in high school um, but it's a really special piece I love the legs I love how delicate they are um, and we have just used it as a bar because I do believe that every dining room should have a nice little bar set up for your guests to use uh, we have a lot of different little tools that I've collected over the years I actually don't drink but Eric loves to make cocktails for people and enjoy them with people so this is a really fun space for him he's collected some different books over the years too about wine and cocktail making obviously being bar owners we do like to learn a lot about different alcohols and wines and things like that so this is kind of a fun little area to showcase that and as we move this way, you will see another one of my most prized furniture possessions. This is a really a second piece, really um, similar to the first one that I showed you that had the TV in it, but it's an 18th century English pine cupboard. And it has these incredible windows or doors that have these little window panes. And I love, love, love the way that it looks. I love that it can showcase my trinkets and my china. This is a china that I actually um, inherited from my grandmother and she had had it for a really long time, was moving house, um, didn't have space to keep it, so she gave it to me. And it's been really special to be able to display that and have that in my home and use it. And then the other nice thing about this is that there's tons of space underneath to use as storage to just throw a bunch of stuff in because it is not always nice and neat and tidy in here. So I love these big drawers. I can keep napkins, fancy silverware, things like that inside of these drawers. Uh, in terms of giving your home a soul and making it feel very personable and specific to your tastes, I think a lot of that has to do with following exactly your own design style. Not everyone is going to like the same things and I think with social media these days we can get really trapped into following really specific trends and micro trends that only last a certain number of months. So I think kind of exploring and looking back at what you've always loved and creating your own design style is a huge part of making your house feel soulful and personable. I also more recently have kind of adopted this philosophy of not saving anything for best. Um, I, because I collect so many antiques, a lot of these things are really important to me. Um, it's, you know, China that I won't be able to ever find again or you know, things that seem very precious, but if we were to store them away and never use them, I think that takes away the value and kind of the point of having these nice things. So I really like to use um, china and my best dishes for everyday things and just um, keep all of your your best things out and use them i think that's a huge part of it and then also displaying personal items i've also recently started to frame more photographs and personal pictures and save notes there's a lot of british designers that i admire that are really good at taking pieces or artifacts from daily life like a note that a loved one wrote you and framing it and using it as a piece of art in your home. And I just love that idea and I think it adds a lot of character. And then I would love to talk to you guys about the table. So 
This um, actually was a recent change. We had a large, long table in here for a while, but it was just kind of clogging up this space and it didn't feel like the flow was super great. You can see we have these two large openings on either side of this room and it felt like it was kind of cutting off the flow. So I love a traditional dining room. I love having it be separate from the kitchen. I love the feeling of setting a table and having this special room where you come in and you eat dinner with people. Eric and I love to cook. We love to host. So I set up the table as if I was hosting you for a tea party, which I have done. Um, I love to have people over and kind of set things up really, really nice for them. There is nothing more special, I think, than going over to a family member's house or a friend's house and they've cooked a meal for you um, and you're not just eating it on their kitchen island, but they've set a really beautiful table, lit some candles, fresh flowers. It adds such a special vibe and it makes the guests feel really important, which I love to do. Um, so we, we're very big into hosting and this has been a fun way for me to kind of play with that is setting these tablescapes. I love to use a mixture of different china patterns, textiles, things that did not come together as a set. I think it makes it feel a little more cottagey and eclectic. So you can see here I have some blue china that I thrifted at an estate sale a while ago. Um, and then I've mixed that in with other different pieces of china, teacups that I've collected over the years. These French uh, linen napkins I bought from a vintage store online. I also have like this vase is antique. Honestly, every single thing on the table is either vintage or antique, including these adorable little egg cups. And these are actually eggs from our chickens. Um, they lay very frequently, so we're always trying to think of new ways to eat eggs because we have so many of them. And then these placemats are actually something that I designed um, and used that vintage fabric to create the pattern and style and design and put them on my website which is house of Margot, and i sell them as a set and i've actually mixed and matched them here so i've used two different stripes but i have this red stripe and then i have this kind of fun spring blue stripe as well i get asked really often online about these chairs i get asked all the time about the color what color is it? Did I paint them myself? And sadly, I have no idea what color they are. I did not paint them myself. I was fortunate enough to find them on Facebook Marketplace as a set. There's actually eight of them all together, so you'll kind of see them scattered throughout my house because there's not room for them to all sit at the table. But they came with these incredible down-filled cushions in this striped pattern. I love it so much. I love having the green in here. I think it's really unexpected, but it works incredibly well in this space and it makes it feel, it's just another thing that makes it feel kind of bright and happy. And then last thing in this room I will talk to you about is my piano. So I am not a prolific piano player by any means, but I first started taking lessons when I was in elementary school. I continued on throughout high school and then when I was in college, I studied vocal performance. So I kind of gave up the piano playing, but I still love music. And from time to time, I still play and write a little bit. So this is something that was super important for me to have in our house, especially as we're getting ready to have our first kid. I would love to instill in them a love for music and have them play the piano if they want to and kind of learn that as well. It's something that I've loved so much. I think it's really important, um, well, just for me personally, when designing a house to kind of have a 
theme throughout in terms of color scheme. And so the main colors that I've used, and I think my friends would probably say are like my signature colors, um, are blue, like a French country blue, uh, a rusty red, and then lots and lots of browns and creams. So I definitely think that you can kind of tell it's my design or my style when you see those colors, as well as tons and tons of pattern. I love pattern. My house, I think to some people would seem chaotic because of all of the patterns that I use, florals, plaids, tartans, but to me, that's really what I love. I love mixing things and layering is a huge outlet for me in terms of design. Um, I think I get a lot of that from the English traditional style, but layering items, particularly antiques, um, on top of each other is a, a real I, like trademark of how I like to design. And as we move through the dining room, we come into this area, which I like to call the butler's pantry. We recently redid our kitchen, and this is kind of an extension of that. Um, we redid the kitchen in February of this year, so very recently, just a few months ago. And my husband and I did all of the work ourselves. It was quite an adventure, but I am super impressed with him and his ability to just do the cabinetry and everything like that. So we added in this floor to ceiling shelving. At first, when we were redoing the kitchen, we contemplated knocking down the wall that separates this little breakfast nook area and the kitchen, a lot of older traditional homes will have a breakfast nook and then a kitchen. So we toyed with the idea of knocking it down and we decided to keep it and turn it into a butler's pantry because it felt more authentic to the way that the house was built. And like I said before, I really do love spaces being individualized and not being completely open concept. So we kind of wanted to keep with that. Um, we painted all of the cabinetry in Pharaoh and Ball Hay, which is this really nice creamy yellow color. And then all of the hardware is an unlacquered brass hardware that we bought online and installed. And then this was kind of pieced together so a space for all of my cookbooks. Eric and I both love to cook. I particularly like to bake, and he is an amazing cook. Um, we also own a coffee shop, and so I would say we're a little bit of coffee fiends, especially my husband. He loves coffee, and so he has his coffee maker here. We have some more utilitarian items up on this counter, as well as a beverage fridge. And then I got to kind of play around with decor with these two shelves. Um, and I was able to display a lot of my stoneware that I collect. And then we added this little brass rail for coffee cups, which is so adorable. And these shelves, interestingly, we actually found the wood in the basement of this house. They were original joists for the house that had been discarded at some point point along the line and were really in disrepair and we took them to a local mill and had them replaned and found out that they were this really beautiful yellow pine and we wanted to use them in the space particularly because they were already part of the house and I made sure that when we hung them we put the sides that had all these imperfections facing out um, because I just love the character that it gives and I really wanted to be able to see those imperfections and see how it was something that was originally part of this house to begin with. We painted the cabinetry ourselves, which was quite a tedious process. Um, we chose the color Hay by Pharaoh and Ball, which is a really lovely yellow that has a lot of creamy undertones. Um, it's a very mustardy color and I just love it in a space. I think it's really happy without being overly aggressive. This is actually really special because it's another original feature of the house. And if we had taken out this wall, we would have had to remove this little cabinet, um, which to me would have been sad because I love 
keeping and highlighting as many of, of the original features as possible. And a really cool thing is actually this latch is the original style and design of the latches that they had. They had unlacquered brass latches originally on this cabinet. And so I took that latch off, the original one, because it was in disrepair, and f basically matched it pretty much perfectly to some that we found online um, and was able to replace them, but basically with a completely restored version of what was already there, which was really exciting. So I love that little design feature. And now as we transition into the kitchen, I will show you another one of my cabinets that I love so much um, that has added a huge amount of color and life to the kitchen. This is another Facebook Marketplace find that we basically refitted. I am typically not a huge fan of painting furniture. I love to leave it in its original state, particularly if it's a beautiful wood. But with this piece, it was already painted. Um, and this is actually not an antique. I think it's probably more of like early 2000s or 90s. Um, but it was painted kind of this off-white color and it really needed to be spruced up. So once again, I chose a lacquered blue. This is a much lighter, this is Wales Gray by Benjamin Moore, um, which it says Wales Gray, but it is very blue as you can see, so be warned. But I love that. This is my favorite blue color. I've used it throughout the house. It's the same as the trim in the dining room. And my husband and I painted this and added the brass um, knobs that actually match the brass knobs on the other cabinetry in the kitchen. And then we filled it up with all of our dishes. I am of the firm belief that beauty is function and things can be beautiful and be functional at the same time. And that was really the philosophy behind this piece. These are the dishes that we use every day. This is our main cabinetry that we store dishes, glassware, plates, cups, everything in. Um, and it's all on display and I love that. I love being able to see the things that I've collected, wedding gifts that we've gotten, um, things over the years, cookbooks, it's just special to be able to have it out and on display. Um, and then the drawers are really helpful as well to store silverware and baking things. Yes, yeah, so I have obviously amassed quite a collection of dishes over the years, but some of my favorites, I will say probably, and I actually don't even have all of these out right now, but my favorite food is pasta and my husband is an amazing cook and he makes amazing pasta. And so a while back I thrifted these really fun dishes that just remind me of Italy and remind me of pasta. So we use these a lot when he's cooking. Um, and this is actually a mixture of old and new. We have some pieces from anthropology, but mostly we have things that I've collected over the years. I would say my most favorite piece of all is this blue china bowl. I use this for serving salads regularly, for pasta dishes, um, and it was something that for a long time I had kept on display and didn't use because I was so terrified of breaking it. And as I've been trying to adapt this philosophy of using everything and not saving anything for best, I've really been using this very regularly and it makes me happy to see it whenever I set the table. I would say what I love most about the home is just the fact that my husband and I have been able to turn it into something that is so us and is completely my style and what I love and I feel so at home and at peace here. I'm definitely a homebody. I don't like to be out late at night. I do like to travel, but I like to be at home. I mean, it's my favorite place to be. So I think I'm just really proud of the fact that he and I have done so much of the work ourselves, like literal manual labor in order to 
turned it into a place that we love so much and is very reflective of who we are as people. This cabinet has been a huge source of storage for us because we actually decided to remove all of the upper cabinets when we redid the kitchen. And I am not against upper cabinets in any way. It just wasn't working for this particular space. This kitchen is a small kitchen. I like a small kitchen. I think it can be just as functional as a large kitchen, but you do have to be aware of the space and how to use things and how to store things. And so that cabinet really came in handy with that. Um, obviously we do have our lower cabinets. We've painted it in the same color and used those same unlacquered brass finishes to kind of tie everything together. We went with a cleaner, more calm countertop color because I have so many other colors going on. And then one of my favorite features is our sink. So this is a farmhouse style sink or an apron sink with this piece coming over right here. But something that Eric really, really wanted was a large tap, um, just a really great faucet. And I actually found this on Etsy. It's another unlacquered brass piece. Um, and it was shipped here and it did take us, it was honestly a huge headache to install it, but he was able to do it. And now it's one of our favorite features. We love it so much. It's amazing for filling pots. Um, and it's just been a great feature of the kitchen. You can probably tell that a lot of the design style in the kitchen has been influenced by Deval Kitchens, which is a kitchen outfitter design team out of England. Um, and my husband and I watched a lot of the episodes of their show before we redid our kitchen and kind of took little bits and pieces of their design. These little pendant lights are similar to a design that they do, but these were also found on Etsy for a great deal. That's something that I like to do is you can find these high-end, well-made pieces on Etsy for a fraction of the price that you might buy them for on a designer site. The most major headache, and really the only headache of this process, was the floor. So we would have loved to have an original hardwood floor in here, but that just wasn't the case. It had been, I think it was three layers of vinyl flooring within an LVT, a gray plank LVT on top. So we came in and we removed everything. We pulled it all the way back to the subfloor and we knew that we weren't gonna be able to match these beautiful original oak floors that the rest of the house had. So I kind of wanted to pivot and do something totally different where it didn't feel like we were trying to be matchy-matchy and it just wasn't working. So we decided to go with this hexagon shaped terracotta tile and it was quite the adventure getting these in and laid because they're handmade and so every single tile is different, a little bit misshapen, a little bit different height or width. Um, so out of the whole kitchen renovation process, the floor was definitely the most involved, but I honestly couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. I think it adds so much character People ask me if it's original. I think it looks historic in the way that it's worn in. Um, and so we're just really, really pleased with the floor, despite the fact that it was a bit of a process to get it in. Something that I am a huge believer in is having soft seating in your kitchen. I think it's something that some people think is weird, some people love, you see it a lot more in European homes or traditional English homes, but I love having a comfy chair to sit in in the kitchen. I love to be able to sit down and watch as Eric cooks, which is such a luxury I know to have a husband that's an amazing cook, but to be able to just sit down and watch or sit here and read or do whatever I need to do, it's honestly, such a fun little spot and so it was an essential for me when we were redoing the kitchen that I would have a little nook to sit down and put some soft seating in. 
My husband and I both love gardening. And so we have over the past few years turned our backyard space into a cottage garden, a potager garden. So a lot of fruit trees and veggies. Nothing is growing, not a lot is growing right now, obviously, as it's really early in the season, but we recently got a greenhouse to start seeds in, and so we've begun planting um, some more cold weather plants and then just the little starts of tomatoes and things like that. Um, as you can see, I have a huge bowl of eggs back here because Eric and I have 14 chickens that live in our backyard um, and they all lay different types of eggs, different colors of eggs. And it's been such a fun experiment for us. We love the chickens. We have ducks as well. We love them so much. Um, we both are huge, huge animal people and I've always wanted to live on a farm. So someday when we get a future property, we'll have more space to have different kinds of animals. But the chickens have been a really fun addition to our little miniature homestead in our backyard. Um, and we insist on giving people eggs every time they come over because we truly have so many that we can't keep up with eating them. Um, and it's just a really special thing to be able to give to people, bring to family. Everybody loves fresh eggs, especially when they're this beautiful. So I didn't grow up in North Carolina. I actually grew up in DC um, and I came here for school, which is where I met my husband. And I actually uh, majored in vocal performance and musical theater. So I always had an artistic bent, I would say. Um, I loved art, music, um, and I've always loved to collect things and design. Like even in my childhood home, I loved having my own room designed exactly how I wanted it. But I didn't really start getting into um, collecting more and more larger pieces of antique furniture and truly designing spaces until my husband and I opened our businesses. So we have a coffee shop together and then a, a, almost two years ago now, we opened a restaurant and a bar. Um, so we have multiple small businesses that we own locally and I have fully designed the interiors of both those businesses, um, which has been a huge, uh, joy for me personally. And then more recently, I started a small home decor business myself, which takes vintage textiles that I've thrifted and sourced locally and turns them into soft homewares like pillowcases and placemats and things like that. So this is our nursery and I will be honest and say that it is not completely finished yet. Obviously we still have a little bit more time before the baby gets here, but this has been one of the most fun rooms for me to decorate. It's been a process collecting things. I have been collecting baby things for a long time and I am so thrilled to be able to finally use them. So we actually have, I would say in this room, more than any of the other rooms, a good mixture of new and old things. Um, this crib is new and it's from Crate and Barrel. Um, and I love the Jenny Lind style with the poles. It's a really beautiful maple wood, great quality. And this was one of the pieces that we wanted to buy newer because regulations and rules with cribs do change over time. And then another new piece that we bought was our rocking chair. Um, and this is from Namesake. I knew that I wanted something patterned. I love the idea of using greens and blues and reds and yellows um, in a little girl's room. I think you don't have to have it one way or the other, but I just wanted to make sure that the whole room was really, really colorful. I love children's rooms that are full and colorful and bright and really happy feeling versus 
plain um, and more muted tones. So I wanted to make sure that I brought in tons of color and one of the ways that we were able to do that was with the wallpaper. Um, this is a beautiful wallpaper from Sandberg that Eric and I put up. Actually, I would say just the last week was when we kind of finished this room. Um, and he and I did it together. We've kind of become pros at this point because we've hung up a lot of wallpaper in this house. But I loved the subtle little yellow flowers. Um, I think it just adds this kind of childhood charm, but it's not overly girly or overly bright. Um, and I love that about it. We also have another antique English pine piece here. As you can tell, I'm a little bit obsessed with English pine, but this is a nice little cabinet that as the baby grows, we can store more toys and things like that as well. And probably my favorite feature of the room are the bookshelves. So these are actually window boxes, like valances that go over a window. But Eric and I repurposed them to be shelving. And I wanted to make sure that we had a place to display books really beautifully, to store little knickknacks and trinkets and things that are important, things that we've collected for the baby change the decor out over the years and so it's also a great styling opportunity um, and we really really love having the shelves it's great storage and i think it adds a ton of charm to the room i actually thrifted this giraffe almost two years ago um, eric and i were trying to get pregnant for about two years it took us a while it was a really long process and before I knew that it was going to be such a tedious process, I had already begun to thrift things. And this little giraffe is just like a sweet reminder to me that after two years, we were able to pull him out of storage and use him in a nursery, and it's been such a blessing. So I've had a few people tell me that our daughter will be scared of it, but I'm choosing to think that she will think of it as a nice friend that's living in her room and is not something that's scary. Um, but I'm a big animal person. Obviously, I loved stuffed animals as a kid. So I wanted to add some of that into this space for our daughter. Another one of the features in this room that I love and I also get asked about a lot are these curtains. So these are fabulous green gingham curtains that I actually found at Goodwill. Many people will be disappointed by that because I've had so many people ask me where I got them. They're exquisitely made and I got eight panels for, I believe it was like $15 um, of these incredible curtains and I've used them in the living room and then I got to use them again in here. The color is perfect. It brings out the green in the wallpaper um, and I'm just obsessed with these and honestly want to use them every chance I get in every room possible. Home means to me, I think, a place where you feel really safe and comfortable. Obviously, like a place where your loved ones are. Eric and I also have a lot of pets. We have chickens and ducks and rabbits and dogs and cats. Um, and so the place where all of us, our family of animals and Eric and I together, and then we're also expecting a baby in June. So I'm about seven months pregnant. So I think a place where all of us can be together and feel comfortable and at peace is really what my goals are for having a home. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.